It's the mechanisms in most steam traps that cause problems for steam users. These are interesting because the white your, your cistern on your toilet, it's like a ball cock op operation and uh, of course there's the, there's the ball, but there's so many mechanical bits about this and they all got rusted up and when you pull them apart they were all full of mud and looked rather horrible. The other thing about these mechanical steam traps is all the various orifices in them, once the steam had gotten going in the wrong direction through the minutest of holes, it, it's a powerful agent steam, it drills holes in the cast iron like that, all there shouldn't be there. That bit in the middle should be half an inch thick and it's actually eating it all away. So this actually must have been no good at all, you know. Here again, you, you might as well have just had a straight pipe, all the water and the steam still carried on on its journey. Th this one is the, the gem steam trap, which of course, one of its greatest features is there's no moving parts. There's nothing but gets stuck or worn out, you see, and there's no way the steam can get straight through it. Uh, and that's really the secret of it all. So how does a gem trap work? There's a flash demonstration available on the gem website. The gem trap works by using the difference in density between steam and condensate. Steam is 1,000 times less dense than condensate. So at the entrance to the trap's orifice, the low-density steam is literally squeezed out of the condensate. The high-density, slow-moving condensate is then preferentially discharged through the orifice, trapping low-density steam behind it. The gem trap has no moving parts, so there are no moving parts to jam, wear out or corrode. 